Hello everybody, welcome to OCHD and welcome to another Jumputi Heroes news video. Today we're going to be talking about the 10-10 event. It's not really called the 10-10 event, it is called the Greatest in the World Celebration Super Edition. And there is a lot to talk about here. Uh, I do have a few other videos planned for upcoming content, just to give you a sneak preview. I was finally able to get into the files of Ore Collection. Um, not not anything too exciting here, just the audio. I was able to get all of the background music. So I will be uploading that in the same manner that I did the Jumputi background music. So we will now have both archived and saved, which I think is quite good. And some of those tracks kind of bang. So if people want to use those for like, background of their YouTube videos and stuff like that, they will now have the option, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and there's some other stuff I'm working on, but today we're talking about what I think was the most highly anticipated event on the roadmap for the majority of people. Obviously for people where there's a series they have a particularly high stake in, uh, this, <laughs> this event was a mystery. And, you know, if it's a series that they really love, they're, they're going to have some favoritism towards that. But in this case, I think the expectations got pretty high. And I will, you know, I will admit my expectations got pretty high because uh, it was this little tease. It was this little thing. What's it going to be? I think we, we had pretty much established it was going to be the world record renewed, which it was. It was the world record renewed. Um... But what what content would be released as a result of that was the thing that was getting people excited. Would it be somehow tied into the number 1010? Would there be some kind of tie? I mean, this event is called the Greatest in the World Celebration Super Edition. So would it tie into that theme somehow? I mean, last time it was Greatest in the World and we had like uh, the Greatest Swordsman in the World and uh, a bunch of stuff like that. So... You could be forgiven for expecting maybe a stronger theme <laughs> for this event. Uh, and you, I would say you'd be forgiven uh, for expecting certain things. You know, it's, some people were expecting Jujutsu Kaisen. Understandable. I think some people uh, were expecting maybe Slam Dunk or maybe some other series that uh, have a big title and a number 10. There's lots of things. There's lots of things people are expecting and, uh, you know, these things happen. These things happen. Sometimes your predictions are just off the mark, but in this case, <laughs> I'm going to give people a little bit of insider information. It's not really insider information. It is publicly available knowledge, but this event is most likely not in the form it was intended to be released. There is content that was probably supposed to be here that was cut. For all we know, the entire theme of the event could have been entirely different. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, for example, um, before we go through all, all of the information, um, you can see Shinobu over on the left. The new Shinobu. This unit was not intended to be a Japan first unit. This was intended to release on the Taiwan server first. That's what we believe, because uh, she's being released for the Tanabata celebration, and they have a different emblem, or it, it's similar, to be fair, uh, and they have the Legend Summon, and they have a unity battle with Doma. And <laughs> the Legend Summon, the ID for it is a Taiwan ID, so it is a different Legend Summon. It is not the same as one we've got, even though it is... A, it's basically identical. It is just the pillars from Kimetsu no Yaiba. So, I think there's a lots, of, lots of things that they probably changed about this event. Um, and what that comes down to is delays with the updates. And we'll talk about that in a sec. Let's let's get started on the actual news though. So there is the promotional image, and here we go. Jump to Heroes World Record Renewal. I've called it Renewal. I mean, they said they broke the world record, but let's be real. <laughs> you, they break the world record every week. <laughs> every time they release a new, a new unit, they have broken their record because it is 
one more unit than they had on there before. So technically, they have broken the world record again. But in this case, it is a renewal of their Guinness Book of World Records world record. They have got the official record for the most licensed manga characters in a mobile game with 1,010 characters, as validated on the 2nd of May 2022. So, obviously, we're, <laughs> we're quite far past that number at this point, uh, but still kind of cool. Now, they did do an interview with Game Biz uh, talking to Fuji P and talking to the new assistant producer. However, there was no information of value whatsoever in that interview. And what that essentially boils down to is they've been teasing stuff <laughs> here and there. Obviously, they have the roadmap. Obviously, they had some stuff they told us was coming. New series were coming. Uh, stuff that was on the last roadmap that got moved over to this roadmap that looks like it's been moved over to the next roadmap. Um, stuff that they've hinted at for later in the year, maybe around Christmas. Loads of little bits of hints of stuff. But <laughs> I have a feeling there is a genuine concern on the developers end that they're not going to be able to deliver everything in the manner they intended to deliver it at the times they deliver they intended to deliver it at um and that is just a result of them being so far behind on one particular update which uh we've got a whole section about in this news post um but yes we hit 10 10 they released a promotional website which for me is laggy as hell uh i don't know how people are getting it to work properly for them it just like so hard for me but you don't even have to deal with that because i have so lovingly included a link to the only website reward which is a limited choice ticket a very nice reward can i just say because uh, there are a couple of units on there that aren't on the standard limited choice ticket so there's a, still a chance um that most players will be able to get something new from that ticket which is pretty cool um so make sure you just click on that and then get your reward if you haven't already of course then we have the first of a few sort of awesome freebie summon things a hundred free summons literally if you just log into the game for the first time in this event you get a hundred of these tickets and you can do a hundred summons for free it is a bit of a restricted pool um if we look down here it only goes up to the end of 2022 no sorry end of 2020 not the end of 2022 end of 2020 which means i think boruto is the last standard gacha unit on there so none of the stuff from Marco onwards has been included in this pool, which obviously for veteran players that kind of sucks, but ultimately if you're a new player, this is still very good. There are still tons of units that came out in 2018, 2019, 2020 that are very good that you kind of need for certain stages or at least are very useful for certain stages. And if you don't have them, it would be ideal if you didn't have to waste a choice ticket on them because there are units on the choice ticket from 2021 now so everything said and done i don't think it's that bad i i you know i did my summons i didn't get much of use but i got a few dupes which you can't really complain about uh some pretty nice ones some pretty god awful ones as well but some pretty nice ones then we have the slightly better reward in terms of free summons this is a total of, I believe, 170? 170 free summons. 17 multis. Uh, you get one free per day. And as you go down the list... Okay, some of these rewards are maybe not that great. One five-star unit from 2020 or earlier is... Nothing really to write home about. But, once we get down to here... Guaranteed five-star unit from 2022... Now, I'm a little bit unsure when they say guaranteed 5-star unit from 2022. It doesn't say hero. It, it doesn't specify. And there are limiteds on this banner. You can see Kurapika there. You can see Saya there. Those are the limited versions of those units. So, can you get a 2022 limited from this? I don't know. I have a feeling that's not the case. But if it were... That'd be kind of cool. Either way, throughout these summons, you will have a chance of getting limited units. So, 
nothing to complain about. And as far as I know, in cases where you've got, say, the second mod, it says guaranteed five-star unit from 2022 or earlier, or 2020 or earlier. Why do I keep doing that? Um, you Anything that is in the standard pool can still be pulled. So there are limiteds and stuff on there. They just can't be pulled on that one guaranteed five-star unit at the start of the multi. So you've essentially got 17 multi, 17 chances to get something half decent, which would be nice, <laughs> which would obviously be nice. But yeah, not bad. Not a bad little reward. And then we have our, our next little like freebie ticket thing. And this is where we start talking about one of the things we can physically see has been cut from the event or at least hasn't been announced for the event yet um this ticket has been given so if you log into the game for the first time during this event you will get this ticket the springtime of youth choice ticket and this will let you choose from a selection of characters you can see that selection down here it's not a bad little selection though it is a little i don't know what the correlation is between the characters at all i'm sure somebody could do the research and figure it out but regardless it's not a bad little pool of characters there's definitely some stuff on there you might not have so pretty cool um but this ticket is supposed to tie into this campaign this campaign is mia there has been no talk about this campaign obviously it was in the data download and we can gather from the fact that this ticket was supposed to be tied to this campaign that it was actually planned it wasn't something they put in the data download by accident or something like that this was an actual campaign that was supposed to be part of this event but it it's not not yet anyway it's possible they might announce this later who knows but this campaign was supposed to give another one of these new world limited choice tickets which obviously we would all love we would all love to get a second one of those um but <laughs> whether we will or not remains to be seen. Now, this event, most likely, the reason it has been delayed is because it was supposed to launch at the same time, or alongside at least, the My Ship update. For those uninitiated, the My Ship update was supposed to launch in May, and it didn't. Then it was delayed until mid July. And it didn't appear in mid-July either. Then it was supposed to come alongside this event at the end of July. And it didn't. And it still hasn't. That update has been pushed back. Now, the problem the developers have reached, which is quite a problematic one, is this is the current build of the game that they need to push out. So this is not something that they've seen ahead. This is not going to be finished. And they've delayed it and they've started working on a separate fork of the game that they can release this is this was the build that was ready to drop and they had to push it last minute if you go and download this game from the app store right now it's it's two events behind there there is up-to-date information on there but the app store icon the version of the game is two events behind and they have made the app icons for all of this. They are using it on Twitter and on their website, but <laughs> it's not in the game. And that is because the My Ship update, it was right there. It was right there ready to be released. We suspect it was supposed to launch basically either the 27th or 28th of this month. It's not happening. They said it's not happening in July. So, I mean, it'll be August very soon. So maybe in August. But that update was supposed to come alongside this event. That was supposed to be happening. And as a result, all of this stuff, which other than the limited choice ticket, I don't really care about that much. But <laughs> all of this stuff, which is essentially additional content for the event, it's just not happening. It's just not happening. So... Um, I don't know. I don't really know what to say about that. I don't, I mean, these were all emblems, and I think the reason this was supposed to launch alongside my ship was because there is some sort of emblem integration with my ship. I don't know if it appears on like one of the flags of the of the boat or whatever, but yeah, that, that's not happening. So we'll wait and see. August is is soon. It's right around the corner. So 
Maybe they'll surprise us. But right now, this has been delayed. And right now, that second ticket is missing in action, which is a damn shame. Uh, but we do have some good rewards that are not missing in action. The 1010 rubies mission, which actually gives you 2020 rubies. Uh, you get 1010 uh, from the 1st of August and 1010 from the 8th of August. So make sure to get involved on those missions. These are all very easy. This one's a daily stage. That's just play the game. Clear 50 stages, that'll be no problem for most players. Um, challenge the tower 10 times in the space of a week, no problem. Winning the tower 5 times, some people might struggle with that. But 5 times in the course of a week, come on, everyone should be able to do that. And the summon on Gacha one, obviously they have set you up with all these free summons up here. So that again should be no problem. And get yourself 2020 rubies. Plus we hit top trending in Japan. So that was another 1010 rubies. So they've, they've been nicing us a little bit with the rubies. But some people would say it's still not enough. And I almost, I, I'd be inclined to agree with them. But it's definitely an improvement. I've got a... Where there is improvement, I have to at least acknowledge it. <laughs> if we're all doom and gloom, we'll never get anywhere. There has been an uptick in rewards. I can at least respect that much. There is a lot of doom and gloom stuff to talk about later. So while we're being positive, let's be positive. Um, then we have the start dash missions, which are available to all players. During this event, you can get an extra free stamina tankards per day from daily missions. Which is pretty good, especially if you're one of the players who's going to be like behind on a lot of the events. Like We've got stuff like Kimitsune Yaiba reprints and uh, Shokugeki no Soma reprints and all this stuff. These are all events that you may have missed out on. And this is giving you an extra 150 stamina a day to try and have a go at that. So very, very cool. Then we have the Jumputi Academy Homeroom. Now this is the first sort of mention of the actual theme of this event, which, I mean, I guess this was also a mention of it, the springtime of youth, but uh, the, the theming for this event is not great. <laughs> it appears to be some kind of school cultural festival, but the problem is the characters is just sort of, it, it, they seem very loosely tied to the theme, in my opinion. Like, you could make an argument for most of them, and I would say fair enough, but it's it's loose <laughs> it is loose and what any of this has to do with the world record and 1010 and all this stuff i have no idea maybe this event had a much clearer theme and and much uh more solid character <laughs> picks and stuff before and everything went wrong i don't know but it's a bit weird nonetheless this is a nice little event 50 rubies every day when you clear this event Plus, you get these stamps. I mean, most people don't care, but still. And you get an additional luxury reward each day. Plus, if you're a beginner, you're going to be getting a lot of materials for leveling up and evolving your characters. So definitely good to play this every day. Um, and then we have our sort of points event, uh, which is from each go 100%. Now, I will say we are seeing a massive improvement in the sprites for each go 100%, which I really like. Um, I don't think Aya needed it quite as badly as Junpei did. Uh, though, maybe version 1 Aya doesn't look as, as good as I remember. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but Junpei looked bad. <laughs> he was a three-star unit. Now, look at the glow-up. Look at him shine. It's a very, very nice update. And in terms of character picks, I mean... Granted, it does sort of result in two more version 2 plus units from uh, a series that doesn't have a lot of content. But I think this is a decent update. I think as far as releasing content that we, we sort of already have touched on, they've given a character that didn't have a unit worth a damn a decent version. And they have given us another very good version of a very popular character. So, fair enough, but I will say if we're going to go back to content like Ichigo 100% stuff like that, if we're going to go back to these series that don't have a lot of stuff to work with, would be nice to see some new stuff in the future. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty straightforward event. You just clear the stage to get this, the script pages, and that will allow you to 
get lots of rewards as you can see here some nice rewards in there including some rubies so make sure you get that done now this event actually they don't do this that often but this event has an event store that updates so on the why am i having so much trouble here the 7th of august on the 7th of august uh the store will update and include some more rewards so make sure to clear the special class every day even once you finish the store keep doing it until uh the 7th of august make sure you clear the daily stage each day um then we have senku again it's another version 2 plus though i will say i am a big advocate for series that have like a limited protagonist standard gacha version protagonist give them a free version as well having one of each i think is is very good and having this as a free version of senku i think that's fine i think that is actually fine uh i i i think my issue more with this event is maybe i wouldn't have put so many of the version 2 plus units in the same event i might i would have spread it out a little bit but you know what this is cool and that means Dr. Stone is one of the few series where we have the protagonist as event limited, uh, sorry, event standard gadget and limited, uh, which I, I'm always a big, big fan of. And I think every series should try and aim for that if they are of big enough popularity to have more than one version of the protagonist. And I think there's some series where it might be worth going back and giving us a new standard gadget version of the protagonist. I'm, I'm looking at One Piece. They've given us so many limited Luffy's. So many, they've given us a few free-to-play Luffy's. Standard gacha Luffy's we did not have enough of. And we still do not. Um, just give us one good standard gacha version. Same with Goku. Same with Suna. Why have they given us so many limited versions of Suna and not given us an updated standard gacha? Like, there's loads of characters you can think of. Obviously, I know a lot of people will probably bash me for that. Because <laughs> some of these series... We've gone over and over and over so many times. They want content from other series. I get it, and I agree with you. But if we are going to go back to these series, I think that would be a nice touch rather than giving these characters yet another limited. Anyway, I'm actually not too upset about Chapter 1 Senku as a free-to-play unit. Pretty cool. Then we have a Demon Slayer content, which we're definitely seeing a pattern um of certain series the devs are just kind of like yeah there's not really enough content here to make something real let's just make a limited and then and then just put anything put an emblem stage put a legend summon stage just don't put another farmable character uh this, this has happened a few times it actually happened twice with uh kimitsu niaiba this year because it happened with tengen it's happened here with kanao kanao shinobu um They've released the limited and they didn't have something for it to counter so a legend summon or an emblem stage it's kind of whack but i'm i'm gonna say something here that i think a lot of people know i am a fan of kimitsu no yaiba but i am getting to the point of oversaturation i think which is my same issue with a lot of series like for example dragon ball like for example one piece naruto a lot of the bigger series once you've lived through the story too many times a lot of the twists and turns don't have the same appeal they once did just because you're so you expect everything and you know everything's coming and you just you're so it's so overdone you've seen it so many times and you know the issues with dragon ball one piece naruto was the gacha games because they were so granular of all the characters they were adding and all the different versions it's like i've seen this story a million times same with dragon ball especially because it had the the console games as well it's like how many times have i lived through the saiyan saga and the namek saga and it's just like it's it's a bit much <laughs> it's a bit much i understand kimitsu no is popular i'm not disagreeing with uh the character pick actually I think we're going to get all of the pillars as limited. As long as they keep it spread out, I'm not too bothered by it because I know they've got to make their money at the end of the day. And at least in this event, they've done it alongside some pretty cool limited picks. But 
I can definitely 100% agree with anybody that says that this canal is probably not something that should be a limited. Probably not something that should exist in the game because we've already got two versions of her. The younger version and the version from later in the story. And this version... I mean, this is like, for anybody who hasn't read the later chapters of Kimitsune Yaiba, this is not like a version of her from later in the story. This is like a composite version of her from earlier in the story, which is really bizarre, and they've made it into a limited. I, I just think we're going to get multiple versions of every pillar. We might get three versions of every pillar, honestly. Maybe more. Like, I can definitely see us getting more versions of Rengoku later. A new version of... 10 gen later like just everything <laughs> just everything um that being said i really like shinobu so i i don't know <laughs> i don't know um but yes i'm definitely a little bit oversaturated on the kim and Yaba stuff I've, I've been appreciating the little break we were having it seems that that's over for now and we have a new legend summon um, I guess this is as good a choice as any for a legend summon character but this is like our fifth one from kim and Yaba, so cool i guess <laughs> and then we have new content from we never learn um which is quite nice to be honest because there's actually a new character it's miharu which is the sister of uh kirizu sensei solid pick for a free-to-play unit i actually quite like it and it also has an interesting effect because we have the limited kirizu sensei then we have the standard gacha kirizu sensei we don't have a free-to-play version of her, but we do have a free-to-play version of her sister. So it's sort of like her sister's like a mini version of her. I I, I kind of like it. I kind of think it's all right. Uh, I think it's a pretty solid pick. And it, it's one of the few units in this event that's actually a new character. So I am, I am totally down. Totally cool. We are very close to completely running out of content from We Never Learn. We're going to get to a point where it's just version 2 characters or version 2 plus. But you know what? This is a solid pick. I don't think I can complain about this. <laughs> then we have Gakuho Asano. Again, another new character. And he's the uh, the principal of the school in Assassination Classroom. Quite a important character in the series. Um, solid pick. I One I can't really complain about. Again pretty cool we seem to be moving into an era of the game where aura costumes are going to be less common which is a damn shame it seems like possibly they are <laughs> getting the people that normally make the aura costumes to make auras for the limited characters <laughs> instead um and then just not <laughs> just not giving free to play units aura costumes as often i i I have made my thoughts in the past very clear that I am not a big fan of emblems as a reward for a difficult stage. I am not a fan of chat stamps as a reward for a difficult stage because ultimately it, it you can only have one emblem at a time. The chat stamps, there's so many in the game at this point, it's ridiculous. It's just, I quite liked that if you had an aura costume, sometimes it changed the animation a little bit, made it look a little bit cooler. And... That's something if you made if you really like that character and you get them to 99 luck and you limit break them or whatever you could use them in pve uh, on like uh co-op stages or whatever and you could show them off that's up to you ultimately that is your choice uh but the the emblems i don't really feel like there's an opportunity to show them off in any sort of meaningful way and even in the case that you are showing it off you could only show off one at a time I do think they need to update those rewards somehow. They have to give you something worth getting for doing those stages. Even if it's just some consumable, some rubies, some uh, like a hero jewel or something, anything. But for now, this is the era of the game we are in. We are in the emblem era, which I'm not a fan of. But the character, very good choice, very good addition. Then we have... <laughs> We have the stage I was talking about earlier, the emblem stage for Kanao. Fuck, why do I keep saying Kanao? Shinobu. <laughs> the, the, the pillar, insect pillar emblem. We're going to get an emblem for every breathing type eventually. And possibly one for each pillar as well, which might result in two for each breathing type. But, you know, 
It's an all right emblem, I guess. I don't really care. I don't, I'm, I'm not even gonna try this stage, I don't think. <laughs> Cause I just don't care. I just don't care. Um, but whatever. <laughs> then we have this particular stage, which is basically the same thing, but this one gets bonus points. Number one, because this is actually something that is relevant for the series. Like, like if you look at this, this is like they made this up. It's like it has references to stuff from the series, the wisteria and the, and the butterflies and all this stuff to let you know it's the insect pillar emblem. But this is an actual emblem from the series. It is the actual insignia of the school. So I kind of rate it. I'm not going to try this stage <laughs> but i actually do rate it and uh we have azami who is not going to be added into the game and i would say azami is one of the key points him and the the constant effort being put into the my ship update these two things are things that i would use to point to to anybody saying oh the game's in trouble the game's in the bin whatever uh that and we got top on trending and we've been making seemingly usable amounts of money <laughs> each month and these things are i would point to to people that are saying is the game in trouble i would say if the game was in trouble i would not be wasting time making a sprite for azami nakiri if he was not going to be either a playable character or a pullable character i certainly would not have wasted time making a sprite for him and the togro brothers which was in the same scenario and um kaluto zoldic who was just not released, was just teased on the website and never released. Um, and like a bunch of other stuff they've just put effort into and just not released. I wouldn't be wasting my time on that. <laughs> and the, the One Piece ones, the, the Big Three or whatever they're called, the... I, I can't remember what they're called, but like King, Queen and, and Jack. I wouldn't have bothered putting effort into those. I would have put the effort into actually making units worthwhile. And yeah... The, I think we're all right. I think we're fine. I think <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, Wonder Planet is a slightly more caring game producer than Bandai Namco. I know not caring because they are a business at the end of the day, but my point is they're more forgiving. That was the word I meant to say. Um, I think Bandai Namco, at a certain point, they just say, you know what? You're not making us millions anymore. Goodbye. And they just shut them down. Which which has happened with so many games under the Bandai Namco uh, umbrella. Including Ori Collection, which is a shame. But, I don't know. Maybe I'm just waffling. In fact, I probably am. And then we have the Unity Battle, which has both uh, Azami and Gakuho. Um, but this is a bonus one, which means it's going to be pretty easy. You can even just auto it and just keep autoing it in the background while you're doing other stuff. And you're going to get a bunch of rewards, which is pretty cool. Then we have the tower boost, which for anyone that cares, it starts on the 8th of August. I I just auto every, <laughs> every, every week I just auto. Every day I just auto. It doesn't matter what's going on, I just auto. Um, but for the people that do care, there it is. Then we have the Super Dimensional Battle Special Ranking Event. Some people can't be bothered to put the effort in to play Super Dimensional Battle every day, but you should because you do get bonus rewards every day, so make sure you do it. And during this event, you'll be able to do it three times a day, so this is going to be your best chance to try and get an SS ranking if you don't already have one. And, you know, the more effort you put in, the more rewards you get each day. Lots and lots of rewards to be gotten. And there's going to be bonus ranking rewards, as you can see down here, which look pretty good. And there's an emblem, which, again, I don't really care about the emblems, but some pretty cool stuff. So make sure you do it every day. Um, and now the gacha. Let's talk about the gacha. So we have the first one, which is Nagisa and Karma from Assassination Classroom. I would say, like I said, with this event, seeing so many V2 pluses is a bit off-putting. But if we are going to get a limit from Assassination Classroom, which I think we deserve, it is a popular series, but not only that, it did win a poll, or at least came high in a poll uh, for series people wanted to see more content from in Jumputi. And that never really happened. We haven't got that much content for it full stop, so... Deserving of its first limited, I think this is a good choice for a first limited pick, and I think... 
uh, for the people that enjoy the series, they're going to enjoy that limit. So, very cool. And then we have the standard gacha units. So, the standard gacha units, we have Aya, which is admittedly a version 2 plus. I, I'm a little bit torn on Aya because I, I think it's fine for us to get a new version of her. But this is the fourth version of her. I know she's sort of like the, the poster girl for each go 100%. But there are other characters, guys. There are other characters. So, while I don't necessarily have a problem with this version of Aya existing, again, this event, the V2 Pluses, it's a bit of an issue, but we'll we'll let it slide for now. Uh, we have Daichi from Haikyuu. Feels a bit out of place in this event. There's no other real sports stuff going on, I don't think. He doesn't really have anything to do with anything. That being said, we also have a sports event coming up later this year, so maybe he was supposed to be in that and he got cut and he got moved here or something. I don't know, but he is certainly here. He is certainly a character that appears in a school. So, sure, I guess. <laughs> he's not a bad choice for a, uh, a standard gacha unit for Q. I think it's cool that he's been added to the game. I personally think there was a good chance he could have been an, an event unit. Because I really feel like if you're going to make so many other characters for, from Haikyuu into standard gadget, he wouldn't be that high up the list. But he's here. He exists. And then we have Taiju. Again, a weird one because this is like chapter one Taiju. And obviously Taiju shows up in chapter two. You no, know, even later in chapter one in his like disheveled... Um, I don't, I don't even know what to call it. Caveman clothes. And I feel like that's the version of Taiju everyone knows. But hey, we've got him. And I'm happy because he's a character I was definitely wanting to see from the game for a long, long time. So I am very happy with that. He is not a version 2+. plus. He is a brand new unit. So very, very cool. Um, No complaints from me except on the home screen... On the, uh, on the main menu, <laughs> when you're on that front page and you see like the school in the background all the characters hopping around if you look in the bottom left of the screen you can see a box full of dolls and it has senku taiju and yuzuhira in there in my opinion it should have been taiju and yuzuhira added in this event but like i said i do think the free to play protagonists is still good to have so i will let it slide for now but yuzuhira better be planned she better be planned uh, and this gacha is actually a fairly good one. Uh, 10 multi is to get the guaranteed limited, which is a thousand more than we have become accustomed to. But I think this is the new normal for gacha like this. And on the way up, you get guaranteed a random new hero from, the, from these three here. And a choice ticket, which will allow you to choose one of these three here. So essentially you're guaranteed two out of the three new heroes assuming you get unlucky and if you get lucky you could get all three and the limited and that's not too unlikely all you need to do is pull you get your random one here and then just pull any other one at any point on the way up to the 10th multi so it's pretty cool it's pretty cool i quite like this and in isolation i have no problem with this gacha whatsoever and it is actually a very cool part of this event unfortunately it doesn't exist in isolation <laughs> because now we have limited gacha number two and number two has two limiteds on it and this gacha this gacha fucking stinks it fucking stinks i'm sorry i am sorry to anybody that is a big fan of either of these two characters but this banner stinks and the reason this banner stinks is the only i would say winning use case for this is if you want both limiteds if you want both, ultimately, fair enough. You're going to do all right from this gacha. But if you only want one or the other, you have essentially been told by the developer to go fuck yourself. Because <laughs> the only way to get both, uh, the only way to, sorry, get guaranteed the one you want is to go to the 15th multi. So essentially to get both. You have to, you have to go all the way. And I think that is so, so lame. Because if I want just Shinobu, for example, or, 
you know, maybe a better example would be just Soma and Erina, because I know that's going to be the case for a lot of people. First limited for Shokugeki no Soma. If I just want them, I have to go for her as well, even if I don't want her. And if I get to the ninth multi and she comes out instead of them, there's a very good chance I have to go 15 multis, unless I get lucky, but most likely 15 multis to get my choice ticket and choose them. That sucks, bro. That sucks. If you're a fan of Assassination Classroom, you ain't got to do that shit. 10 multis, and there they are. But if you're a fan of these series, either of these series, but not the other one, or you just don't have the rubies to go all the way to 15 multis, you have been fucked over. That's just the reality. So I'm not a fan of this, and I am. I, I want to go for Shinobu against my better judgment. Because I do think they're doing stupid stuff with Kimetsu no Yaiba. And I've told you that I'm sort of oversaturated on it. But her animations look cool. We've already seen them on the Taiwan server. And they do look good. I quite I like her as a character. Look, I'm just going to put it out there. If we ever get... Um, a t like Himejima as a limited. I ain't pulling for that shit. Okay? I just want to put... Uh, I just want to say... I'm not going for all of the pillars. But I particularly like the two that they've released this year which is unfortunate um but yeah it's it's a bad time this gatch is just a bad time and again in isolation there might be a, f a way to forgive this but you have this gacha up here and you have this gacha up here and there is one more limited gacha during this event period which fucking Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on. Uh, which we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. But the defeat gacha, as always, I do not recommend you summon on these. Uh, the large ruby pack is somewhat mediocre value, but not the worst. The super greatest in the world special pack is bad value. Do not buy this. The special multi pack, I do not personally recommend purchasing packs where you get a limited... But you do not get to choose who that limited is. And it is not from a set pool of specifically good limited. Although they have shown you Toriko and Naruto there. This is just a generic limited pool. You could end up with Gear 4 Luffy. And then you're having a bad day. So I can't really recommend that pack. This pack is just for the whales to top up their accounts. If you're not a whale, don't even look at it. This pack is... I, I kind of resent a little bit because the way they word it is almost like this pack is a gift. It's like, oh, thank you for your support. Here's this uh, awesome pack. It's it's 10,000 yen, guys. That's like $100. It's not $100 because the conversion rate is all, all fucked up. The world situation is fucked up. The yen has just plummeted, uh, which is good for people that do not live in Japan and want to make purchases in yen because you know this is actually a good time to be buying stuff <laughs> in yen but um again ten thousand yen is a choice ticket at least and two thousand rubies i think there is a better value limited choice ticket which we will talk about a little bit further down but i can't really recommend normally spending money just to get a limited choice ticket but in this particular case uh, i i don't recommend it i don't recommend it uh, then we have this pack. This is one of the best value packs in the game. This is one of my personal favorites, and I always buy it when it is available. 2,940 yen, which under normal circumstances is probably about $30 or about like 25-ish pound, 26-ish pound. Um, maybe I've got the numbers a little bit off there, but this cost me like 16 pound. I don't know how much it'll be in dollars, but... It is a lot lower than normal. You get 3,000 yen and, and 30 jewel fragments, which is free jewels, uh, which essentially means it is the same value as this pack here, and this pack costs 10,000 yen. So three times the price? More than three times the price. It's, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Obviously, you get the rewards over the course of 30 days, so... Some people are a little bit impatient or whatever, but the value is there regardless. The value is definitely there. Um, we have the new Tower Store unit. Now, interestingly, Kaname Hagiri seemingly will not be a Tower Limited. And Tower Limiteds are sort of... Uh, 
how do, how do we put it? <laughs> They're sort of really fucking expensive. I don't know. Are they good enough to justify their price? They're good. Are they good enough to justify their price? I don't know about that. But they were releasing those every six months. So every tower anniversary or tower half anniversary um, for the last few years. But now we have a tower half anniversary, no tower limited. We're instead getting a standard tower unit, which we haven't had in God knows how long. Kind of cool considering we haven't had a friend point unit in God knows how long and that suddenly appeared last event. So maybe this will be an opportunity for them to kind of go back and give us some of the stuff that they haven't really paid attention to in a while. Maybe they'll give us a new um, a unit in the metal store or a new unit in the unity battle store. We'll see on those, but for now, he will be coming. And it should be noted, he is not the same sort of caliber of character as, you know, we, we've got Seto Kaiba as a Tower Limited. We've got, uh, like, Final Form Yozen as, <laughs> as a Tower Limited. These are very important characters to their series. These are characters, oh, and Athena as well. Very important characters to their series. Very powerful characters within the context of their series. And arguably, all either could have or should have been limited characters rather than free to play. That is the sort of caliber of character they have been choosing for Tower Limited. And regardless of your feelings towards Yu Yu Hakusho and towards Kaname himself, ultimately, he is sort of just a goon. He is, he is, he's like not that important to the story. He is of relevant importance to the arc that he does appear in, but ultimately he is just a guy. There are much more important characters in Yu Hacker Show. There's absolutely no doubt about that. So, um, yeah, it makes sense that he is not a tower limited, but that does mean he will be cheaper. So pretty cool. Uh, and then we have a limited rather than a tower limited. We have an actual limited gacha. And this is the third limited gacha I was talking about. We have Sephiria Arcs. Now, I will say this gacha while it is very, very cool, she is a limited, and out of all of the limits that have been added, I think she's probably the best pick out of them. Black Cat do not have a limited, and I think she's like a standalone character that's been made into a limit, which I always think is cool. Yeah, the dual units thing is alright, but I, I think it's going to end up overplayed. By the time we're two, three years down the line, you're going to be sick of seeing these dual limiteds. But for now, I think they've chosen two very good picks for the dual limit, so I will allow it. But... I just love it when it's just a character that wasn't in the game that was definitely limited worthy and now boom added as a limited i love that shit and there she is now the problem <laughs> the problem is the gacha format it stinks it's so bad guaranteed five star unit on the third multi bear in mind there are no new heroes on this gacha on the other gacha, say for example for the assassination classroom pair, you get a guaranteed new hero on the third multi. And then on the sixth multi, you get to choose between the three new heroes. And throughout, you always have a chance of pulling one of the new heroes. In this gacha, there are no new heroes in there. So... A guaranteed 5 star means nothing, the 5 star choice ticket sort of means nothing, and you still have to go 10 multis to get her. So I think that's a dick move. You could have at least let her save the <laughs> save the 1,000 rubies, put her on the ninth multi. Um, the 5 star choice ticket, I mean, whatever. It's, it, it's stupid. It's stupid. I have a feeling she's going to be absolutely disgustingly good for PvP, because that's how they like to do things, but it's... It's a weird feeling for me. It's, it's very weird. But, I mean, it's cool that she's here. It's definitely cool that she's here. Then we have this pack, which has been officially announced now. But regardless, it's not a good value. Don't buy it. Uh, we have this, which we already have a gacha like this where you do five multis and get a guaranteed limited. And it's sort of like a start dash thing. You get it. Uh, it's, it's like available... From when you start the game, you can do you can do it at any point, and it's just a cheap way to get a free limited. This is a new version of this that has the dual units featured on it, which is pretty cool. I will say I'm pretty sure Luffy and Ace appear in the other one. 
uh, in the featured banner image or whatever. So I don't know what that's about. But I will say we have no context for this gacha as to when it will be added. Will it replace the old one? Will it come alongside the old one? Will it be the same sort of thing where you can summon on it any time or is it just going to be available for a little while? No idea. Absolutely no idea. But I will say it's kind of cool. And I do hope it's like the other one where it will just sit there because I, st I still haven't summoned on the other one. Uh, but I just like that it's there. And at some point, if I'm feeling like it's been a little while and I've been saving up and there's nothing good's coming out. If I want to summon on something, boom, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, good value. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, then these gacha. Now, I'm a little bit torn on these gacha because... In my opinion, these are not really for veteran players unless you're one of these whales that will just summon on a whim. Um, because there's so much like new stuff coming out right now. To go back and summon on a gacha like this is not ideal. That being said, the fact that it has multiple featured units on it. However, you get to choose one at the end. Knife multi, you get to choose which one you want rather than getting a random out of the four that does make this much better value than normal reprint gacha um as for whether you should summon on these that's going to come down to your individual desires but there's definitely going to be a lot of people who want to go for either the kimitsu the Iber one or the one piece one or the dragon ball one or the naruto one or the bleach one there's definitely going to be people that have missed out on a certain limited and are desperate for it or they started the game too late and the character hasn't come back or whatever. And this could be a good opportunity for them. In that case, go nuts. <laughs> go nuts. Um, by just seeing all these reprints at the same time, it does make me wonder, like, how are people supposed to have enough rubies for this? I will also say another thing. Uh, some people are not a big fan of, like, seeing leaked data before the actual game announces it. But with Gacha like this, unless they announce... All of this stuff ahead of time, how do you know it's coming? If you've been waiting for a long time for, say, for example, Toshiro. You've been waiting for Toshiro to be re reprinted for ages and ages, and it just hasn't come, and you're desperate. And an event like this comes along with multiple limits, and you go, fuck it, I'm just going to summon. If you don't know this is coming, you're missing out on your best opportunity to summon for him. I don't know. It, I just feel like it's good to know stuff ahead of time. If we can, I'm not saying we need to know everything for the next like two, three years, everything that's coming, but just if we can know the immediate future, <laughs> what limiteds are coming, what reprints are coming, I think that's useful information. Um, then we have these reprint gacha, not really reprint gacha, but uh, it's for the tower. It's a good pick for each slot in the tower. So slot one, it's got your turn one double tappers. Uh, and then slot two and beyond it's just characters that are particularly good in those slots are particularly useful in those slots and these banners apparently are going to feature hero grade units it says they're hero hero grade units that are particularly good in those slots as well potentially as supports so these gacha are actually potentially quite high value the only downside to them is that it's one of these ones where you got to go 15 multis to get the choice ticket. So, I think probably only for the Mega Whales again. But if, you, if you've been, like, desperate for one of these turn one amazing double tap units. And this gacha comes along and you just got the rubies lying around. The chances that you've got that many lying around, I don't know. But it might be worth it. I don't know. It's, again, it's another one of those things where if you want a specific unit, this does give you the opportunity to get a specific unit. So, that's down to you. Um, and then we have the updated Superstar Gacha. Now, I don't know if this is actually going to be implemented or not. It was not implemented for the Superstar Gacha at the end of July. So whether this is something they're planning for the end of August, I don't know. Uh, but they definitely needed to update this Gacha to make it worth summoning on. This makes it slightly better. But again, there's still no guaranteed limited or guaranteed Muso step. You still have to keep summoning till you have enough choice ticket fragments, which essentially means 40 multis. So the reality of this gacha is not as pretty as what it uh, would li like to have you believe it is. 
Uh, but still, I mean, it's cool that they've improved it, even if only slightly. I'm still not going to be summoning on it, and I do not recommend you summon on it either. Then we have beginning of the month pack, which is not very good value. We have the 3.5 anniversary tower pack, which, again, not very good value. We have the once per month limited pack, which, again, not very good value. We have these two packs. I need to update that because I put limited door pack one twice. But regardless, this pack is certainly not worth it. This pack, how could they? How could they? 4,900 yen for 500 limit break doors. I want to I wanna put this out there to people, okay? I do get asked quite a lot, who should I limit break? Guys, limit break whoever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter. It's only of major importance in super dimensional battle. And that's it. And ultimately, as long as you have like one limited of each type, one event unit of each type, one hero unit of each type limit broken, you're good. You're fine. I would argue that the buffs, while they do make a difference in PvP, unless you're going to be one of these dirty, sweaty tryhards, you're fine. It's it's not going to make that much difference to your life whether you're limit broken or not. And, yeah, offering a pack that allows you to get one character up to plus 30 for what should be the equivalent of $50, that's a dick move. That is a dick move. So I do not rate either of those packs. Do not buy those. Uh, this pack is... Uh, it's not too expensive, but it's not very good. This pack is very cheap. I, I don't think they're going to release this, but it's only 120 yen. You get a 10% chance at a 5-star unit. Um... But by <laughs> spending actual money, 120 yen, I know it's not a lot, it is a pittance, but actual real money for a 10% chance at getting a unit you want. You could buy this 17 billion times. And probability would suggest that you would get a lot of five stars, but it is theoretically possible that you would get nothing. So how can I justify spending money on it? If it is theoretically possible that I could buy every ticket available, it is once per day, we don't know how long for, if it's theoretically possible I could buy all those tickets and get nothing, why am I spending money on it? Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. That being said, I know some people are going to be tempted to pull if they do release this pack. Uh, just know that's my thoughts on it. Uh, then we have the luxury daily gift pack. We do not... Do we have full details on this? We do. Uh, it's not very good value. I, if I'm spending 10,000 yen, I better be getting 3,000 rubies. That's all I'm saying. Uh, this pack is not that expensive. The rewards might ultimately be worth it. We don't know the full rewards, but it's it's not great. 250 rubies, 980 yen. It's not great. You shouldn't let the freebies sway you too much. Uh, but then again, if you're a beginner and you're like desperate for stamina, and this gives like, I don't know, 50 stamina balls. I'm not saying it does, but saying it did, it might be useful to you. I don't know. Uh, but it's just one of those things. <laughs> the specialty pack that gives a choice ticket. Again, ultimately, I don't think I can justify this. I don't think I can say it's worth it. But this one, this one, potentially there is something there. Because you get more than 3,000 rubies, 3,300. You normally only get 3,000 for 10,000 yen. And you get this special version free limited choice ticket. It's not called that, but... It is a limited choice ticket, potentially has quite a nice pool of characters on it. And you get a bunch of other goodies, which even if we exclude the bunch of other goodies, I still think this ticket is not bad value. I mean, what you would normally get for 10,000 yen, it is better than that. So again, it's difficult to recommend, but at the same time, if I was going to recommend anything out of the hyper expensive packs, that's probably the best one. If it's released, which I don't know. Will it be? Won't it be? I don't know. And then this pack's not particularly good value. Don't don't buy this. I, I don't even know what freebies you're going to get from this, but <laughs> just, just don't buy it. Uh, Ultimate Scroll Pack, not worth it. Uh, 3.5 Anniversary Choice. T yeah, not worth it. Don't buy it. Now, we have some other stuff. Quote, unquote, stuff. Uh, we know what this is. This is the new uh, Lost Civilization emblem. Pretty cool. Uh, this... I don't know how we're supposed to get this. It might be linked to the event that's not available anymore. Uh, but this is an emblem 
for this event. It's essentially this event's emblem, the greatest in the world, super edition. Um, I don't particularly care about emblems, but this is not a bad one, so I hope they do implement it somehow, but I don't know how. We have the same thing for 3.5 Anniversary of Tower. I'm assuming this is going to be tied to Tower missions, but again, we don't know. And then this item, which probably had something to do with Shokugeki no Soma content at some point, but again, I don't know. So that's pretty much it for this video. Don't have much else to say, but I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, there will be more to talk about in the future. And I might be doing some summons as well. Uh, if you see a summons video go up at some point, just know that I tried to resist and I failed. But yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time.